DPS is the most important thing in WoW. Do you need to deal damage as healers? Yes. Is your tank damage too low? Yes. And not only will I tell you why DPS is the most important part of combat, I will also make you appreciate your tanks and healers a lot more. As promised, this video is a response to you guys liking our Future of WoW classes video, which you can check out after you finish this one. The question for this topic actually has two answers. Yes and no. And that's not a cop out, but mostly because the discussion is a bit more nuanced than it may seem. So let's firstly dive into the no answer of this. DPS isn't the most important part because of the very obvious part where without a tank or a healer, you would die, regardless of how much damage you would be doing. But the video is not necessarily about DPS classes or DPS specs or DPS players, but more about DPS or damage per second in general. Tanks and healers can both do damage and a lot of the time they have to, but a lot of the other time they don't at least healers. Tanks only really need to do as much damage as to keep aggro, which is, if my knowledge isn't wrong, not less than a quarter of the damage dealer's specs, since threat scales four times higher for tanks than it does for damage dealers, and usually this number gets tweaked around, so you get the basic idea. After this, tanks just need to make sure they survive long enough for stuff to die. Similarly, a healer's first job is to keep the tank alive. Second job is to keep everyone else alive. Third, Third would be a more complex responsibility that is usually shared with the rest of the group in interrupting, crowd controlling, handling mechanics, etc. A particular responsibility which has been pushed on healers disproportionately compared to other roles. More on this in a minute. The first layer of World of Warcraft combat is handling the mechanics of the encounter. Mechanics refer to spells you need to interrupt, AoE abilities you need to dodge, debuffs to dispel, crowd controls you need to do to stop certain of the already mentioned events from happening. If you are unaware, unprepared, or just put it simply bad at the game, then your damage is irrelevant. But surely, this is a phase that everyone surpasses eventually. If we are talking about raids, there are fights where it doesn't matter how much damage the group has, since there is no DPS check, where raw output of damage does not determine if the combat mechanic is completed, and these are usually very, very rare. Fights like Sun King in Castle Nathria require actual healing to just enable the boss, let alone kill him since without healing, Kel'thas does not come down, or rather his avatar or soul or whatever. Other fights like how Mythic Zakarn was at the beginning of Aberus required more tanks and healers than any other encounter. Some Hall of Fame guilds used 4 tanks and 5 healers and even went as high as 7 tanks and 9 healers to be able to handle its mechanics. How is your damage going to matter if you don't live long enough to dish it? The same thing happens in Mythic Plus Keys, where the main stopper for people to push further is the fact that they die, and not that they don't have enough damage to put out. Although raids stop scaling at mythic difficulty until your character has max eye level or close to it, it might as well be infinite scaling in the sense that if you fail to dodge something, interrupt something, that something will usually kill you. Once it doesn't, we can talk about the fact that maybe you are not pushing the content as high as it can be pushed, but that's not important for our conversation since not everyone plays that way. When we talk about everyone, we can talk about the fact that while content isn't designed where not having damage is a problem. Fundamentally, if raids to world first can be completed within two weeks of the raids launch at most, then clearly everyone has damage to overcome the content. What's likely lacking are a combination of proper mechanics, coordination, team composition and communication and so on. But DPS is not important until it is and that's usually when you meet all of these requirements which leads us to the second answer to the question and the fundamental one. Do we have a Patreon page. We do! <laughs> If you like the content we do and want to see more and more, consider supporting us by clicking on the link in the description. Along with this awesome segue, you'll get access to bloopers, early videos, and personalized wallpapers with your characters. We would be also super grateful and able to tackle different kinds of videos that wouldn't do as well on YouTube, such as likely this one. So thanks! Is DPS the most important? Yes. Well, from a philosophical standpoint, the encounter ends when the HP bar of your enemy reaches zero. It won't reach zero if you have infinite healing output and it won't reach zero if you have infinite damage reduction, meaning that you have to do damage to win. With just this argument, the whole debate closes since this cannot be refuted, but 
we can do better than that. Once all of the barriers have been overcome, the mechanics, the defensives, the crowd control, the healing needed, whether you are a tank or a healer, what do you do? You start to look for more damage. Let's take the healer example, since a lot of people complain that they are told to do damage as healers. In BFA and more recently Shadowlands, healers were required to do a lot of damage. Resto Druid had a good healer kit in BFA for Mythic Plus, but it also had some of the highest damage output out of all of the healers, and one of the main reasons you would want a Resto Druid Druid to push the highest of keys is that they could do a lot of damage efficiently while also healing efficiently. Simple. While the hots were ticking, you were in cat form dealing damage. In Shadowlands, at least at the beginning, Holy Paladins were the best healers. They had a good kit for Mythic Plus, but probably not the best. They were cooldown reliant, and one of the best ways to play Holy Paladin in keys was to make sure you rotated your cooldowns efficiently so that burst damage doesn't catch you without a means to heal. In fact, in that sense, they struggled more than other healers and were probably the most difficult healer to play in a key. Yet, they were the best. Why? Well, that's likely because a Holy Paladin was doing almost as much if not more damage than DPS players in some instances. A combination of Venthyr, the seasonal affix and bloodlust, Holy Paladins were outright out DPSing damage dealers and it would count as like having a fourth DPS that can also keep people alive. This was nerfed, of course, but it proved that when healing is sufficient, DPS can be infinitely optimized. There will be a point where healing is enough and you will be better off doing damage. There is never a point where damage is enough. More damage is always better. Again, provided we understand each other that this does not come at the cost of playing correctly. In Dragonflight, we see less of healers doing damage, but definitely not at all. That's mostly because the damage intake profile has been changed to be incredibly bursty, forcing healers to not have as much time, if any, to deal damage. But when they do, they deal it. Once again, putting as much DPS out as possible, as opposed to as much healing out as possible, which would probably be called overhealing or wasted healing. Outside the niche examples that I mentioned, which are far and few in between, all raid difficulties can eventually be cleared with enough gear, without healing checks ever being actual healing checks. Meaning that because of the player's power scaling, that healing check turns into another, oh, let me just throw some heals out, mechanic. In a sense, that can be said about DPS as well, and it would be true. In this scenario, there aren't DPS checks either, but there is a crucial difference between the two. The boss will never die if your healing is too high, and it will definitely not die if your healing is bigger and bigger and bigger and so on. If anything, the healing needed goes down and down as players progress through their power creep, as opposed to DPS. The more DPS you have, the faster the boss dies. And you might also say that good DPS can and is facilitated by good healing, aka DPS players can play more freely and engage with mechanics that would tank their DPS less if the healers can out heal those same mechanics, enabling DPSers to blast even harder. Well, first of all, this is already proving my point that you can muscle through whatever would be called the healing check, and second, it proves even more how much more important DPS is than anything else when a good healer is enabling better DPS. But this is the time when you can actually appreciate a good healer. And make no mistake, the point of the video is that DPS is more important than anything else and not that DPS players are more important. Those are two different things. A good healer is the healer that does both the afflicted affixes, that dispels bursting efficiently, that heals through shitty executed puddles and beams on Kazara, all of these just to make damage dealing players do more DPS. Those healers are secretly heroes and in my book are the best kind of healers. And all of this together with healers needing to DPS is done solely to speed up the encounter because the only real enrage healers have is their mana bar. We have to end the fight before the healers run out of mana. That can be managed by proper efficient healing, but more often than not by big fat DPS that nukes the target before it ever gets to pose problems. Tanks are similar. If you can survive a mechanic efficiently and not have to use a defensive ability, use an offensive one. If you can trade a defensive ability for an offensive one and still be able to tank, you will. A more recent example is Protection Warrior's unnerving focus talent, formerly a conduit, which increases rage generation massively. Because of this, you would use last stand, normally a defensive cooldown, shitty one, but still a defensive cooldown, as an offensive one where all the rage would be converted into damage since casting shield block three times in a row does not give you three times the damage reduction, just gives you the same but for longer, but casting revenge three times in a row gives you three times more revenge damage. It's a simple and silly example, but it makes my point. Not only that, Season 1 of Dragonflight and prior seasons of Mythic Plus had situations 
situations where you wouldn't even bring a healer to a group and only brought a prot paladin just so you can get a fourth DPS in that group. Sure, the healing was provided by the tank and you could say that the tank here was the most important player and you would be right, but you wouldn't be right if you said that the act of tanking or the act of healing was the most important, since this whole thing was done to squeeze in more damage and not more tankiness or healing. And there are fights like the Zakarn one mentioned earlier, where you would sack DPS players for more tanks and healers, but that was tuned, and by the end of the tier, it wasn't the case anymore, where you would still want more DPS players. If a tank can solo tank a raid boss, they will, so that you can have an extra DPS. Similarly to a healer, a good tank does not stop at being the tankiest tank, just as much as a good healer doesn't stop at how much healing they can do. A good tank is a tank that facilitates the performance of DPS players. A good tank always positions the boss and pack of mobs facing away from the party so that the rest cannot get cleaved or breathed on. A good tank keeps aggro efficiently to make sure DPS does not have to be restricted. A good tank makes amazing use of its defensives so that healers have less to heal and can instead DPS more. Everything a tank can do to improve the performance of the group is making sure the group can DPS more. And the same can be said for a healer. These two key factors essentially make a difference between a good tank and a good DPS. DPS. Both an increase in tankiness and HPS throughput are not directly proportional to their necessity for the successful clearing of the encounter, making it so the more efficient they are, the less of them you need. The better way of countering that is by saying that the more healing and tankiness you have, the harder the difficulty of the content you unlock. But at this point, the discussion enters a Mythic Plus versus rating argument, since rating is capped, where it's decided that the higher key you do, the better. But is it? Since the game and players stop scaling at a point because there's only so much numbers in eye levels and the rewards also stop scaling at a point because there's only so much numbers in eye levels and I think this is at a plus 20 or whatever, then does M plus really have infinite scaling? If past the 20 it's just personal glory? Because with infinite scaling you need both infinite healing and infinite tankiness as well and of course, infinite DPS and the whole argument just derails off topic. There's never such a thing as too much DPS though, outside rare situations where you end up pushing a raid boss into a phase too early to be efficient. This is rare and those points can be countered by having even more DPS where you push the boss even earlier to completely avoid the timer mentioned before. And if this is still not helping you decide if you should play WoW in 10.2, whether it is by maining a DPS, tank or a healer, then you should watch our video on whether it's worth coming back to WoW in the Emerald Dream patch.